I do, but you unfortunately took your headphones off before we had to start this intro. But today, you know, everybody, today we're going to talk about the favorite name I want for an IT guy that works here and also the importance <laughs> of HR and IT and kind of why this whole HR, IT kind of marriage thing kind of works out a little bit. Works good. All right, everybody, let's, let's roll the intro and uh, shoot late again. So the big question is this, how are leaders like you that recognize people and technology are the backbone of the company they're building continue to make progress when they have no clear idea on how to develop individuals and utilize technology in a way that helps them remain profitable? That is the question and this podcast will give you the answers. This is Tom and Michaela and welcome to the Heart and Hustle podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to Heart and Hustle. This is officially episode number 13, lucky number 13 here. Yeah. Can't believe we have 13 episodes already. I know. It's been crazy, hasn't it? Yeah, it has been. I it's think... gone by slow but fast. Yeah, that's that, that's for sure. Last week we spoke about, um, I think we alluded to, we're going to talk about Jason's heart this week and a little bit about it. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to kind of push that off a little bit, maybe week or two a couple episodes from now maybe we have some real special things going on with jason's mm -hmm. heart and a lot of cool things that are going to be happening and lots of stuff in the works i think we're going to save it up for the uh, official launch of everything okay is that good with you sounds good wonderful well i think you know my idea for tonight um today i guess if you would i really want to talk about why hr and it why did we do this and why, why did we do this and why nobody else really would think of putting you know putting these two putting 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 <laughs> button. um why nobody would think about putting these two business units i guess instead of big companies um together to kind of us perform those functions for others mm -hmm. and i think it's kind of a tough call people often scratch their heads you know most people in the industry of um, technology and it you know, they kind of stay away from that stuff. They focus on, you know, maybe just IT more, stuff, IT stuff, more, <laughs> more projects, more big systems and everything else. And, and, um, I, you know, I've never seen another IT company and a, a successful IT company, you know, say, Hey, we're going to do HR too. Doesn't happen. I think we're the only I, one in the country. I think at this point that it really probably does this. Maybe possibly I'm aware of, but. Yeah. There might be something out there, but I think some may do it on a superficial front, but probably nothing like how we're trying to do this. You know, for me, it was when I worked for a very, very, very large company, um, HR and IT were really two entities inside that company that a, they never spoke, they never did anything and, um, you know, together and the companies were mostly focused on, uh, you know, the business sales and marketing efforts and everything else. And IT was kind of a resource. HR was kind of a necessity. Um, they had to have it to kind of manage the people and everything else. And um, for me, it was just a realization that, you know, when you have all these people and they're using technology and the technology is what is driving not only the business, but HR has to be so focused on the business and its growth. It, became obvious to me of saying, Hey, listen, you know, these small companies, medium sized companies, you know, most of them do not have a dedicated HR professional. Mm -hmm. Um, most of them do not have a dedicated it professional at the senior level. They definitely don't have a dedicated HR professional at the senior level. Everybody will have the bookkeeper or, you know, the little it dude that runs around to fix the broken stuff. But from a leadership level, they just don't. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's hard for most companies and, the reality is, is that so many people um, leverage technology every day of their lives. And every I think day. every business obviously leverages people. Every day. Every day. <laughs> and the conversations that, you know, I got into that we still get into are, you know, from the IT side, for me at least, they always swing to people. They always swing to people are having issues. People are, you know, they may be frustrated with, certain types of software it's impacting the team mm -hmm. um, the team morale is down because the, the systems are down or whatever it is and a lot of the stuff of course we inherit and our goal is to try and fix rectify and make things better but as i said before i think i don't know what episode it was maybe one or two it really came to light when um 
we had an issue and we had a client that wanted to put uh, cell phone jammers inside the bathrooms because they're really concerned about people taking extended bathroom breaks and, you know, wasting their time. And for me, that was the aha moment um, when our company started to say, hey, listen, you know, you really don't have an IT problem. I mean, sure, you can buy that equipment online, but, you know, when that first person falls down, bangs their head, you're going to have a people issue. So for me, it was, you know, that was the point in which I said, hey, listen, you know, we got to really focus on the people that these companies are working with and hiring and bringing on board and how they're leveraging technology and, and um, you know, kind of figure out what to do, how to kind of wuzzle these things together to kind of make this weird combination of HR and IT. Because, you know, usually sitting at the table should be a professional HR person on the executive executive team at all times yeah. so, and it seems like small companies that's the last two positions that people really feel is that senior leader it professional and the hr professional yeah. um, they need people in different positions to be able to carry out the work uh, so a lot of people that we work just don't have those dollars dedicated to those positions um, well, and well, sometimes they're not even necessarily they don't even necessarily need like that full-time right. person um they just need a little help and a little guidance and uh, that's that's kind of what we do yeah it's you know when i grew up my dad could fix everything you know the air conditioner i think failed on the house the house i grew up in when i was a kid and uh if i remember correctly he took the compressor out of the air conditioner and actually unwelded it i guess if you would fixed it and put everything back together and i think a lot of these business owners, a lot of these, you know, CEOs, quote unquote, you know, I think they think they can be an HR person. I think they think they know where they understand what it means. But the reality is that they're making so many mistakes. It'd be equivalent to, you know, maybe an HR executive thinks that um, and maybe she runs the company or he runs the company and, and they think they know how to sell or they know how to sell their products and their solutions just because they know the product. It doesn't mean that they're good salesmen or saleswomen. It just means that they can talk about it. And sometimes you don't want them in the room when you are making that sale. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult on the, on the IT front too. You know, sometimes you don't want the technician or the engineer in the same room because they'll typically blow up the conversation when it comes into sales. Mm -hmm. They really don't get the human behavior side. I just like to add that the spectrometer readout on the nickel cadmium alloy mix indicates a good rich strobe and fade, decreasing incidence of wear to the pressure plate. If you could just whoa, little fella, uh, you're not speaking my language. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you know you you run into these scenarios where these individuals, you know, they they think they know how to fix something. I mean, you, I mean, I see it every day where you know the you know the owner thinks that he or she knows something about it you know they had a computer and they've always done it this way and things have been working fine in reality they're so far from uncompliant or not compliant with whatever industry that they're in you know just taking a simple credit card you know mm -hmm. they well, just aren't yeah i mean i work with that's probably my number one issue when i work with my clients is they just don't know what they don't know right. and you start to kind of pull back the covers a little bit and look at everything from a whole because hr and it but hr touches everything in your business and you really have to take a step back and look at look at a variety of issues and how everything is touching everything else and um, oftentimes people just don't know what they don't know. And so we run into compliance issues. We run into, um, labor laws. We run into all kinds of things. And, um, you know, we start going through that process of, okay, this is what this should look like. Right. And, and people are like, oh, I didn't know how deep the, and wide this was. Yeah. I think it's pretty scary. I can't, you know, I can probably count on, they had five hands, you know, 20 times in the past year where, you know, you're talking to a client or I may be speaking with, with somebody and we're kind of approaching the HR issue because, you know, I see it a lot when I'm working with the clients, but we're so embedded with them and you start to talk about it a little bit like, and eh, now we're fine. We don't have an issue. And, you know, you can point out 17 different things very cautiously and try to explain the issue at hand and kind of help them see it a little bit. And then they still, I don't think they want to acknowledge it. They just don't want to, you know, 
admit that there's an issue. Sometimes that's the case. Sometimes that's very much the case. And then, I mean, of course, you have the client clients who um, know there's an issue, but just don't know how to fix it and need a little bit of that guidance. But some people just, you know what, I don't have time for this. I don't have time to deal with it. I don't want to face it. I don't want to deal with it. And just leave me alone. <laughs> and so it's like, okay. Yeah. You know, we see that obviously all the time. And what my, you know, the biggest thing I found out with, you know, just years of experience and talking to people is, you know, as you get to know your clients, and your customers, it's that trust factor. Yeah. You know, every single mm -hmm. new customer, quote unquote, that we have worked with over the years and everybody's new at some point in time, you know, it takes some time for them to trust you mm -hmm. and to really understand that, you know, you do have their back. And most individuals, most companies out there, I think, um, you know, when they see the sales dude walk in or trying to sell them, you know, some sort of agreement or some sort of contract or some sort of financial commitment to them, you know, they think they're being sold. They think that, you know, they're going to get something and the value just isn't quite going to be there. And it really doesn't matter in my professional opinion on how much value add you put inside those agreements. It really doesn't matter how much, um, you know, slicks or marketing or anything that you want to do for presentations to the, to the customers. You know, you take the three, you know, the three salespeople that show up to kind of sell a product or a solution to, to the board or to the leadership team of the company. And, you know, for me, I'm highly embarrassed to do that model. Uh, I'm embarrassed for them only because I think they're trying too hard. And oftentimes, you know, those individuals don't really know their customers. You know, they're not at the point where they really, really, truly understand their business and what makes them tick. And I think that's hard. I think it HR, I think it's tough, you know, it's difficult and in, inside of, um, you know, HR outsourcing, I guess, if you will, to really do it. And when you have key, you know, keywords and, you know, key terms that you're trying to sell on, I mean, my goodness, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. What here? It's hard. Yeah, it's here. not. And I think HR in particular is, I mean, we have we have customers all the time who you know that it is an immediate need mm -hmm. it's an immediate need you can plug something in it works great well it's a little more complicated than that but it is an immediate need that they have to have to run their business and hr is a little more less time sensitive in some scenarios and right. it's also um, one of those things that that like you were saying, you have to build trust to be able to work with clients on that level because those are difficult conversations often. And you're dealing with people, you're dealing with human beings, you're dealing with how the organization runs and how it's structured right. and how to deal with discipline issues and how to deal with hiring. And just, I mean, it's huge. And you really have to have that trust with, with a client in order to be able to work with somebody. And I don't know how many times that you've started working with somebody on the IT side, we've broached the HR concept with them. And then they're like, ah, nah, not right now. We're good. We're good. And six months, a year later, they're knocking at our door again saying, yeah, maybe we could use a little bit of help. Well, you know, they're knocking at the door, but you know, through that six months, you know, you're as you're providing support, you know, as our engineers and technicians are working with individuals, you hear stories, you know, you hear the stories every day of every week on how someone's not happy and they're upset or they had a well, fight. Well, and you, you've built that relationship with yeah. them. We've built that relationship with them and they're, they know we're not there just to sell them something and no. to, you know, hit them up and leave. And I mean, mm -hmm. we were there, we're, we're part of them, we're part of their team. And so... You know, if I could point out to right, left field, left, I'm not sure what ever baseball do that on that sports guy. So they're, <laughs> they're going to point that direction. Maybe we can get the link or something or the pitcher. But um, I think inside the next six to 24 months, there is going to be a major, major uh, upheaval inside companies in terms of people, people management, um, you know, supporting the employees, working with you know, new staff, the employees trying just, just to make people cooperate and work together. There already is. And you can see it now, but mm -hmm. you know, this weekend, I know you and I went to, um, we went to a restaurant in Omaha and, um, had a really good kid's meal. It was a good, it was a good kid's meal. <laughs> it was a wonderful kid's meal. 
big kids meal. But anyways, um, we took the kids out there and we walked in and we'll get the image here and we'll show it to you. But it basically, there's a big picture in the window and it says like, um, something to the effect, we'll show the image here, but you know, we're in desperate need of hiring anybody. And by the way, the long hair, creepy people can now, can now also apply. It was something yeah. long haired those... hippie people. Yeah, it was crazy. But, you know, basically what's going on is I think people are desperate. They are so desperate to hire people right now. They're so desperate just to get a warm body in there and that they're not really making the right sometimes decisions. And you can make the decisions, sometimes a good decision on hiring folks that are, you know, what, what you understand are, you know, more entry level and kind of training them up versus hiring a seasoned person because sometimes, you know, they, they can be more difficult. Um, but oftentimes I have had success hiring those individuals and as long as they're trainable and wanting to learn and they have the stamina behind them or the ability to, to learn and want that type of career. Um, you know, someone took a chance on me once and mm -hmm. it is what it is there. So that's another conversation for another day. But at the end of the day, you know, sometimes you, you find those individuals that, that you can train, but what you can't do is settle. You can't say, well, there's really nobody out there. So, you know, not to stereotype anybody, but like with that science said, you know, the long haired, you know, goofy people or whatever it was, you know, the individuals that they know that they would never hire typically based on whatever. In fact, we had a client. Um, oh my gosh, who was it? I can't say if I did know, but um, they don't do background checks anymore. They're like, hey, we're, we're not going to do a background check because that may not allow them to actually work for us. So we're just not going to do any background check at all because um, we feel safer that way and we really need people. Yeah. And that's not good. So, but I think in six to 24 months, there's going to be a, a huge problem. And I think when people get ahead of that and just slow things down a little bit and making sure they do have those right individuals and those, those right teams, I think it's really going to help. But on the flip hand side, I think those services from, HR consultants, um, coaches, team building coaches are going to be in high demand mm -hmm. because they're going to have to figure out how to work with the team that they got and they just can't go and fire that person. A lot of people are in that situation right now. So Yeah. Are you seeing that now with individuals or with companies? or Absolutely. Just kind of the Hail Mary and say, yeah, warm body. Mm, that too. And, you know, dealing with poor behavior, poor behavior in the workplace, and they're scared to fire them because there's nobody else. Who else we got? We we can't get any applicants. Yeah. We can't get any people in here. Um, I guess we just put up with the bad behavior. Yeah. And what really stinks is that, you know, you, you take these individuals that, you know, they may have bad behavior, poor behavior, but they're hiring them a lot of times with no real skills when it comes into just basic, you know, technology, I guess, inside of the office when people use, you know, email systems or, um, you know, word processing programs or whatnot. I mean, they literally sometimes don't know how to compose an email. They don't understand how to you know, put a signature inside their Outlook or inside their Gmail or whatever it is. Uh -huh. And so what's happening is that then is slowing down the entire process of the business and then causing, you know, more added resources on the technology dudes to kind of show them sometimes the basics. And at that point, you're introducing a training issue. Mm -hmm. And yeah. most IT companies are not really trainers. They're not there to go out and show people how to utilize the systems in a deep level. They're there to kind of show them, hey, things are working in some of the basics. But they're not corporate trainers. They're not there to show people, you know, the ins and outs of Word and Excel and PowerPoint or, you know, whatever application you're using on a web-based system. The managers that they're hiring sometimes are just expecting the person to know it or to kind of just figure it out. Mm -hmm. And that is causing a lot of turmoil inside companies. It's causing um, a lot of upheaval. It's causing people to be frustrated at their job, mad at their manager, um, and thus creating more HR headaches and issues. So we end up in this big perpetual circle of, um, you know, people and technology and people and technology and people and technology just round and round and round and round. Yeah. And, and thus, here we are. IT and HR. IT and HR. You know, I think every company should, every IT company, everyone out there should figure out how to encourage their customers and um, to leverage better HR. Just my opinion out there. I think they go hand in hand. I think it's a married type of 
situation with those two operational divisions inside the company. I mm-hmm. think companies need leadership from the HR side, from the IT side, from the marketing and sales, and you know, obviously the operations side. But um, I think it's super important, at least to me. Yep, it is. So I agree. So, I don't know, any parting thoughts? Um, no, I think um, I think you summed it up pretty well. I think IT and HR go hand in hand. Um, everything any business does every day relates to IT and right. HR in some way, shape, or form. And a lot of small, medium-sized businesses can't necessarily afford those dedicated positions, no. but there no. there are other options to make that happen. So, my offer still does hold. What's that? If anybody ever applies with our company, ever, and their name is Aaron, immediately hired, all times. And for that, that one there, that's an we, off-topic subject. We will still do a background check, guaranteed. <laughs> but I want an Aaron. So if you know somebody out there that is looking for work in the technology or HR space, and their name happens to be Aaron with two A's, you're hired. Talk to this we'll, lady. We'll just let that one settle. We'll let that one we'll settle. We'll just let that one, that offer sit there. People can think about it a minute. <laughs> there you go. All right, everybody. Um, have a wonderful week. We'll catch you next week for sure. And like I said before, next couple of weeks, we're going to start opening up about Jason's heart a lot. So yep. catch you guys later. Bye. Ciao.